G'day everyone, welcome to Breakout Wednesday. It is Wednesday the 21st of August 2019. The market's been chopping around, um, down down and up and down and up uh, the last week. Had a big down day on the 15th of August, uh, with Thursday of last week, and then uh, I've rebounded in a bit and then it's been chopping up and down. So um, this is certainly a time when I'm mainly in cash, like maybe 85, 90% cash, and, and then I have a few small positions going in, in kind of lower cap penny stocks or uh, stocks that sometimes can you know not, not care too much about massive market dumps in case we have another wake up and the Dow's down at 900 tomorrow. Sometimes those tiny little small caps aren't as affected, as affected and um, you know I like to trade those at all times, but especially during market corrections, that they can still move pretty well. And so, uh, so but look, this is time for patience and time for just sitting around and, and catching up on other things in life, but also finding stocks that aren't as affected by, by any down days as other stocks. So looking for relative strength, in other words, uh, the, you know, the stocks that are resisting you know, the, the correction, quite often the stocks that once the market turns and starts heading up, uh, the ones that really take off and and so I think a, a lot of study needs to be done done during those these times uh, a lot of sitting and not trading and just a lot of study and most people struggle with that and they're just going to chase dumb trades and chuck their money away to Mr. Market and and that's the cycle of of most traders so let's just rattle through last week I talked about uh, mainly earnings gaps and uh, why I like earnings gaps and why they're so powerful and why I think that if you just concentrated solely on them you can make uh, uh, a good bank. And so JV Hi-Fi was the one I spoke about last week, gapped up on earnings, held the earnings, formed four tight days here. And so I, last week I said I needed six tight days in order to trade that, in order to swing trade that. And so I didn't enter a swing, swing trade, but I did enter a day trade. So a day, one way, um, you know, a day trading method is, is literally find these big gap ups on earnings where there's a catalyst behind the gap up on big volume and wait for it to break out. But if you want a consolidation on low volume that, you know, you know that looks bullish and there's a bullish pattern and all that sort of stuff, and then you want it to, to break out and take out that high. Um, and, it's, and it's not always, but it's, it's, it gives you quite a high probability day trade setup. Uh, it's also set and forget, and it's, you know, relatively easy to trade. So, uh, it, I was in and out of that on, on that day. The, it gapped up the next day. Obviously, it didn't benefit from that. If that had consolidated for six days or more, it would have, um, it would have taken a position on that as well. So, um, but you know, it didn't, and so I didn't. And now, a few other just gap ups that I'm watching, gap up stocks that I'm watching uh, is um, Baby bumped in, uh, gapped up big earnings, uh, had another two days up, and now it's consolidating. So I want that cons consolidate here for. Ideally, six days or more to, in, in order to take a swing trade if it breaks. However, if it consolidates for three, four, five days, uh, you know, and it looks bullish on low volume, all that sort of stuff, then I'll take a day trade on a break of that. So it's liquid enough. That, you know, it does, you know, it does a couple of million uh, worth of worth of stuff a day. So you can get a little bit in there. It's not it's not a hugely liquid stock, but it's probably probably enough to get get some sort of position on. So EML gapped up today and. Uh, on big volume, um, and you know, this is just one I'm watching. I didn't trade this today. I mean, I, I, um, there are day traders out there that look for catalysts and then will you know day trade inside that day. And I, yeah, I struggle with that sort of stuff. It's just not for me. But now I, I simply you know wait to see what the market does with the earnings reports. Comes out, you know, gaps up, big volume, closes near a tie. So this is a stock that I want to watch super carefully. If it can consolidate, you know, for six, seven days, and then break out above this this high, I'll be on board. If it breaks up tomorrow and um, just it just looks bullish on an intraday chart on a one minute chart, then you know I'll I'll scalp the break of this high of the daily high here. Okay, so. Um, you know, some people have sent messages saying they want more info on day trading. It's it's really kind of hard to get do a proper job on that within a 15, 16 minute talk. It I uh, kind of need to talk to hours. It's taken me, you know, well over a decade to kind of find a way to win at that game. And so uh, it's just I really I really struggle to to try and convey that in 15 minutes. So, um, but 
one simple method I've already talked about is second day plays and when you have a massive gap up on volume where there's a catalyst I like to trade the second day and so we'll just get a break of that and you know it's a it's a high probability setup okay and so but to swing trade it or what idea they want to consolidate for five six days they're, they're the bread and butter in terms of um, all that now K, Kathmandu, K, uh, KMD gapped up still base in uh, I'm watching this this one it's it's yeah um, I just like I just watch these gap ups. I put them in a watch list. I watch them every day. I see what they're doing, and you know. Um, but the theory is my theory. You know, I didn't create this theory. I, I learned it from someone else. To be honest, but it's it, it, it works time and time again. And this is just going to base. I'm just going to watch it, and then you know if it if it breaks down, who cares? No, no harm done. If it, if it bases for longer and breaks up, then I'll climb on board. Uh, REA is. Just a market darling that uh, doesn't seem to care about uh, property downturns and that sort of stuff. So, um, and you know, I had an engineer really gap up, but you know, I had massive volume and big moves, and I uh, have a small position in this. But it's also like if we just look at what the market's doing, you know, it's kind of like you know, just made a, a lower low here and it's stuffing around, and it's looking pretty unhealthy. And then we look at what these stocks are doing, it's just there's clear divergence there, there's clear relative strength. and. You know, this is we need to. Be, you know, I, I concentrate on on the stocks that are just, um, you know, just brushing off what the market's doing and and, and acting and showing huge relative strength. I wait for them to base and I climb on board. Uh, SHV gapped up today, closed on its high, not huge volume, but you know, okay volume, and so I'm watching that one uh, to base a bit longer. <clears throat> it's um, uh, okay, and then WTC did the same. Uh, it's got a lot of you know resistance just above it here, but it's still you know it's still gapped up, closing its high, um, so that's a decent um, earnings gap. So <clears throat> moving on, just rattling through a few stocks that are setting up. I mean, the gold stocks have been um, getting hammered. So uh, Newcre uh, Newcrest, I still actually have half position on in that because um, it's just still. Um, above its 50-day moving average, which I'm using, uh, and the other one I was in with it was Gore, uh, which I've still have a bit on that. So I haven't been getting super hammered, but uh, a lot of little ones, um, Santa Barbara, you know, uh, that you know this is back down to its breakout level and, and all that sort of stuff. So I mean, gold certainly not not as hot as it was a few months ago, and I'm not really focusing you know too much on gold. If there's awesome setups that come along, I'll, I'll take them, but I'm just kind of what I'm really spending my time on is trying to figure out uh, what stocks are showing relative strength compared to the market and if the if the Dow is down 700 tonight and tomorrow you know that's just that's just so cool because you just need to spend time looking at what stocks are not down big what stocks you know are just holding holding strong uh, and there's a reason for that if, if if you know weak stocks get dumped and and strong ones you know people hold on onto it for a reason so uh, there's a lot a lot of good can be achieved during during bad times in the market so and um, AGH I'm watching it's based in here it's been going up for a while now it's a pretty pretty strong uptrend but but you know you could have heaps heaps more in it AIA Auckland International Airport this has I mean, this is a, this is a good company that does well, and uh, this is based in here, and yeah, I'm I'm watching that one pretty pretty carefully. So, WSA based, uh, I left that one alone, but so it's pretty pretty decent decent setup. AVH, uh, AVH <coughs> is based in here. This little try this little kind of mark here is just the fifteenth of all this on that massive down day. I just leave that mark there to remind myself that and. And on this day, AVH just you know just gapped a tiny bit down and just rallied and just didn't care and it's just it's breaking this massive base here and uh, like I'm not in it yet. I don't really like buying just randomly the break of these you know down sloping resistant lines. But uh, you know I like to kind of wait for it to break and then just hopefully consolidate. And if this consolidation forms a little handle here and breaks up, then then that'll be that'll be a, a good entry. So uh, moving on, Blackstone, you know, it's based in setting up, so we'll or hell that one, but it could be a could be a decent move if that can uh, base longer. And uh, I'm watching the same story. It's 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 based in a way it's um, yeah. And so uh, that's one uh, for the watch list, just like this next one. Whoops. GPR, it's pretty liquid. Today I did 14k worth of worth of stock, but you know, it's a pretty um, 
pretty low, uh, low day. So, well, some other days here, 100, 100 grand, um, 80, 200 grand, 98 grand, 25 grand. So, I mean, this isn't space where we want low volume. Let's just look at some of these bigger days here, 218 grand, 181 grand. So, you know, depending on the position size, uh, you know, you know, if you've got a big position on that, you're going to get stuck and it's, and it's super risky. But this thing's basing and uh, it's worth worth a watch if that breaks out. Could the um, could be have a bit of a run. I'm watching this guy. It's obviously good things happening with this stock. Uh, it's pretty hard to you know to know how to enter this thing. You, you know, you could say that you know you'd buy it on a break back here, but I didn't and so now I just need to be patient I didn't buy this break here it's just it's just, just too much of a loose base for me to randomly buy the you know the breakout of this all-time high I just find that I get stuck in so many false breakouts when I do this it's like I've got I call it air you know like there's so much air here you know it's not a tight base it's loose because there's all this air just left behind here and so I just this needs to tighten up longer. This needs to go sideways and then give me another entry because the real entry was back here because in terms of risk reward because you can get in there and you can put your stop loss down there and I missed that so therefore I just need to be patient. I can't just go and buy this all-time high breakout because I don't really see a very good place to put a stop loss there. Um, I mean I could make a few up but rationally speaking it just doesn't really make, you know make sense. So therefore I needed to base and to be patient. If it races off without me, so be it. Oh, that's the way things go. So I'm in this guy H R R from this nice base here, uh, you know, the sending triangle base, whatever you want to call it. Uh, entered here, and you know, it's. I was hoping it was going to just obviously. I was hoping, but um, just rush up and go for it. it. It's 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 had a decent move up, and it's just going sideways now. So I'm still in it, and I'm being patient, and I'm hoping uh, we get a move up there. So. Uh, but KAR certainly it's um, you know there was a down day that 15th day yeah that's right and it, and this thing was up so this is just an example of why I like uh, penny stocks why you know people that say penny stocks is like gambling I mean uh, yeah I don't I don't get it at all uh, it's not as if I'm just buying this and forgetting about it and you know just whacking it in the bottom drawer. I'm buying it and managing it and, and trading it and I don't see why it's you know, why it's any more gambling than you know doing buying BHP or Commonwealth Bank without a plan like what most people do so so anyway uh, but it's each for their own then I'm sure that a lot of people like to uh, have an argument with me on that so Minkor I'm watching pretty carefully uh, nice huge move up on volume it's based in here so uh, this, I mean, look at this little base back here. It's just so nice. I like this stock. It it tends to move. There's only like issue 286 mil uh, for a 57 cent, cent, so like cent stock. So uh, that's pretty good. And this thing can uh, move when it wants. And so if it can just base here a bit longer um, and then break out, you know, even in, even if it just breaks out in a few days, uh, it could be could be pretty decent. So moving on. Oh, PAA, yeah, look, this stock, this stock's choppy and volatile and it loves to shake people out. I'm just hoping this thing can tighten up here below this level of, you know, 0.088 and just tighten up, tighten up. It started to do it, but it just needs to do it for longer. So uh, that's on the watch list. Theta gold mines, base in, sideways, uh, pretty obvious, pretty obvious what what um, you do with that one it's it's you know it's one of these stocks it's really not that I mean this is a weekly chart now right and it only did even on this big week here on with massive volume it only did say you know, 281k of stock so <clears throat> it's there's a good chance you're gonna get you know a really bad fill and then it's gonna stuff around and take ages and um, you know it's gonna be hard to get out when you want but for small accounts uh, you know, small cows can be nimble. One now, uh, a good example actually, what I was just talking about is Van. I'm in this thing, I got filled on this day, and you know, it obviously started pretty awful, uh, fell all the way back down, and you know, today it kind of just, you know, it's it's a liquid, right? It's, it, it had this big breakout on, on volume, on you know, how much volume, a million shares went through that day, but then it just went back to its normal trading. So, uh, I'm stuck in that. Uh, I'm not really stuck, but I'm in that, and I'm going to be patient. It hasn't gotten in my stop loss yet, so I've used a pretty wide stop loss on it. Um, you know, 
it was kind of broke out and then it was a bit too early to to raise my stop it all happened so quick so i'm just being patient on that it's a nice decent sideways base and and the odds are decent that this thing's just going to go for a gallop at some stage hopefully before i sell it uh, xte uh it's, look this was hard to get on board and i'm not on board it but um yeah, but I mean, I just thought that looked cool. <laughs> um, now, a few US stocks. That is not a US stock. Uh, is AGI is a gold stock, and I'm just watching this for a short term trade. It's, you know, it's just broken down this, you know, through this little, um, you know, resistance line. And now it's got resistance 7.27, 7.27. So it's hit that same level, you know, three times now. It's formed a tight little base here. So, so you know I'm, I'm looking it's a gold stock which i guess i like it hasn't really been really pummeled like a, you know not pummeled but it hasn't had that big a retracement like some of the other gold stocks have it's held up pretty well and uh it's forming a, a tight little range there so um agi is on the watch list in terms of american stocks um okay so there's a few other american stocks there that i could rattle through uh but i'll probably i think i'll leave it at that Actually, there's one other thing I was going to leave you guys with. So this podcast I listen to every now and then, it has um, the odd good episode. And so I listened to a few days ago, I listened to this one with uh, John Rambo Moulton, who he's a, he's a scalper, day trader of interbank um, T-bill futures. And um, his... It's of not like obviously his strategies aren't really relevant for people who are swing trading stocks and and all that sort of stuff. However, I think uh, for anyone who's really really serious about trading, this is just a must listen to. Uh, the way this guy just knows his stuff, but he also just has really good ways of conveying uh, all the mental uh, sort of stuff and and you know what it takes mentally and, and a few tricks that he uses and. Um, I like I like the episode. I think it's um, if you want to hear from a guy who's been trading his whole life and has some good stories, uh, check it out. Uh, good luck, everyone. Catch up.